Markets up, tariff talks. Markets down, rinse and repeat. But wait, is there more lurking below the surface driving this volatility? Stay tuned, we'll discuss this and much more. Hello and welcome to Wealth and Wisdom TV. First up, don't forget you can click show more for additional information and links from articles and information on today's video. Also, if you find this video of value, please do consider subscribing. Lastly, we had a new video out this weekend on Weekend Wisdom about the importance of a financial plan and this was specific to our Wealth and Wisdom viewers. So from here, let's go to the numbers, week ending, 4, 6, and not too pretty. Only one big index holding barely into the green. That's the NASDAQ, 0.17. So now let's take a look at the big charts. Well, first up, we see a lot of things here. At the bottom, I added in volume. Volume has been really weak, except on down days, not a good sign. Next up, momentum, the momentum of the market, MACD, still in a negative crossover. So again, that'll tell you one of the reasons why we are negative short term. At the top of the chart is relative strength, RSI. And there has not been much, if you look at the beginning of the chart, at the beginning of the year, you see all that green in relative strength because we sustained and drove the markets higher. Now we can't get above 50, and you see us pointing down on Friday. Not a surprise with a big down day. But the big picture is right in the middle. One, serious support. 200-day moving average, which is rising, by the way. But every time we get to that 200, we pretty much either hold. We did just close below it one day last week, and then we had a big move to the upside with Larry Kudlow trying to help about the tariff talks, and then on the upside, you could see resistance. So support, resistance, support the 200 day. We saw it again on Friday. We broke through, and really, I was watching it, and it came back at the end of the day there. So. The algorithms once again come in and save the day. So here we have our 200 day support and resistance are two areas. One is a sloping 20 day. You can see it right there on Thursday, how we went up and failed and came back down. That's also the 38% retracement, which is part of the Fibonacci information below on that. I've talked about that in the past. I don't want to get too far into it. So. We really are looking here at two things. The bulls are looking for a breakout upside. The bears are looking for that break to the downside to see if it continues to go down. And at some point, a resolution will in fact be coming. So this is why right now, short-term signals, negative. Next up, here's our weekly view. Well, the only good thing last week, we held our 1516 support. On the bottom end there, almost broke through, but hell, but at the bottom, again, continue to see a negative crossover on two significant signals. We also have uh, some other information we'll discuss, but again, in this case, this is why our midterm signals are now negative, have been for about a week or so. All right, so next up, let's take a look at the monthly chart. So yeah, at this point, the long-term bullish trend is very much intact. You can see it, but look at our all-time high, all right? And then we had our hanging man close, information on that below. Last month closed lower, and right now we're lower. So we have now three lower highs, and just barely, if we zoom in there on the right-hand side, just barely holding that 12-month support. The other thing is, and I point this out, Look at that button hook at the end on the monthly view. If we get a cross over there, then we're definitely heading in a different direction. So for now, our long term is still positive. What's your opinion? Quick, we have a little two, one question, two answers. Are you bullish or bearish right now? And Michelle will put a link up top 
to get your opinion. So next up, let's talk about the market breadth. And I'm gonna start with the 50 day first this time. And I also went back to 1516, which was our last meaningful correction. And you can see it, right? So those companies above or below the 50 day moving average or their respective 50 day moving average. And it's ugly, all right? If you're bullish, you're above 60%, below 40 is more bearish or cautious, which is right now short term. And you see S&P in the 20%. NASDAQ 10%, mids at 31, and the only one holding right now are the small. So really, market breadth on the short term has broken down significantly, and you can correlate it to some other periods where we had some issues. So the 200-day, so again, on a 200-day, bigger picture, you're going to have a smoother ride here, no doubt, because it's 200 days of pricing, so where are we compared to 15 and 16? Well, we're holding up at this point. You see at the top, S&P up 52, NASDAQ 48, mids 48, and smalls at 41. So again, holding on in the long-term picture, you can see going back to 15 and 16, it's when we break that 40 when things really turn ugly. So going to continue to watch this as we move forward. NASDAQ, same picture on the S&P, breakdowns everywhere, support at the 200, and also the 38 retracement seems to be its upside resistance. So next, here is a new view. I added in, I want to be able to see the international view, and we have S&P, Germany, China, emerging markets, and Japan. And you can see here that across the board, the picture looks very similar. Now, this morning in a the journal, there's an article, Cracks Form in Global Growth Story, Rattling Investors. So that's one of those stories lurking below. And you can see the numbers year to date, not too pretty. Emerging markets as a whole is just barely holding on there. So let's get to the sectors. Real quick, this represents 76% of the S&P. Okay, the big part is the NASDAQ, so our technology. So as tech goes, that really helps drive the S&P. And as you can see, financials moved down last week. Health moved down last week. Consumer discretion and industrials all down last week. So again, reaffirmation of our midterm view being negative, U.S. equities only one of 11 in an uptrend. International, we went from 14 to 16 in an uptrend. So both, as a group, are considered to be in a downtrend. So one question I got last week as I was making my quarterly calls was, what about the fear, FOMO, fear of missing out? Now there's two of those. One is this is going to take off the fear of missing out. And they're worried about the big boys getting in, the large institutions buying and moving the market. Well, here tells you not the case. Look where we are right now, just above 50%. This is the NAIIM, which is the institutional money managers, only in that 40 to 50% invested right now. So right now, the big boys are out. And as you can see, here's a chart I picked up last week. Investors and hedge funds, because they have to be in most cases, are invested. The institutions have really lowered their overall allocations. Next up, what's on my radar? Well, not much right now because of what we're seeing in the volatility. I just want to point out again, here's our dollar. Head and shoulders, classic head and shoulders, drove us down. Had a double bottom, and then we've kind of been forming this consolidation. So I have our little line there in blue to show you the resistance. If we break above that, we got to be careful. Again, that is not good, especially for international. So we'll see. As I've mentioned, Larry Kudlow will prefer a stronger dollar. But for now, that is something on our radar. And gold, just real quick showing you, as expected, failed again on trying to break out. So no movement there and not in gold at this point. Treasury spreads continue to be low, 0.50 
Although we did see a move down last week on the longer end, 10s and 30 years, as far as yields going down. So that helped portfolios last week. So next up, what keeps me awake at night? <gasps> well, obviously tariffs has been a big talk here recently. I'm not gonna get too far into this. I showed this chart for those who haven't seen it. This shows back in 1930 when we had tariffs and what happened, nothing good. And then during Bush era, okay, 2001, put in tariffs and quickly remove them. So tariffs are not a good thing. I'm all for fair trade, but tariffs have not worked in the past. Next up, this or excuse me, the other day, even after a tumble, stock market price is not right. This shows you again where we are. Current CAPE cyclically adjusted, 31.34. The median is 16. PE at 24.3. Median is 14.69 so fair value all right if you look at that really or over values 20 fair value 15 under value 10 so if you look at the charts if we get back to just being overvalued that would be another loss of 14.7 already being down 10 percent 15 fair value would be a loss of 36 percent from here and i'm not going to get a next one because i don't see that happening but again we're still way overpriced the last thing here is patience pain is not over here's a good chart that shows corrections since 2009 took about 200 days to fully recover so patience is important wrapping things up fear and greed this week nine last week eight so again a lot of fear in the market again indicators two are negative one is positive short-term mid-term negative long-term positive and yes my favorite yes most hated statement stay nimble because you see what happens here right it takes time to get out of these corrections a lot of volatility right now so patience is real important as always thanks for watching michael loftus for wealth and wisdom tv